This is the Capillus 272 Pro, a medical device that uses low-level laser therapy to promote hair regrowth. Now, to get this, you need to go through a licensed medical provider like Dr. Robert Leonard. How are you? Good, thank you, Dr. Leonard, and thanks for joining us. Can you tell us what type of hair loss is this used for? The Capillus 272 is a device to treat androgenetic alopecia. And androgenetic alopecia is the most common cause of hair loss that's around. In fact, 98% of hair loss is due to genetics or androgenetic alopecia. Why do you need to get this through a provider like yourself? This device needs to be obtained through a provider because a person does not necessarily know if he or she has androgenetic alopecia. In going to a hair loss expert or physician, of course, would be the place to begin their seeking the cause of the hair loss. Uh, the Capillus 272 is one of several treatments, in fact, to treat this particular condition. And are there certain signs or symptoms that people need to be aware of in terms of this hair loss? Yes, there are. Uh, hair loss can begin at any age, from the teens all the way up through the ninth decade of life. And the most common sign is shedding of hair, excessive shedding of hair. And it's amazing to see that after 100 hairs of shed per day is where we consider that to be a problem. So we consider abnormal shedding to be more than 100 hairs per day. And people don't believe that, but it's very, very true. And uh, that is the most common sign for androgenetic alopecia. So if I'm somebody concerned about my hair loss, what should I do? Just collect the hair that I lose every day? What, how, do you, how do you suggest we go about well, doing I, that? I've been specializing in hair restoration surgery now for over 29 years. Mm -hmm. And I have seen calendars full of hair. I've <laughs> seen bags full of hair. Oh, so sure. uh, one of the things that patients can do is count the hairs after they shampoo, for example. And what I have patients do is a hair count. So it's simply counting the number of hairs that come off their head in one day during the first hour of the day. So the four areas that I ask patients to look at are any hairs that are remaining on the pillowcase in the morning, in the shower drain, so if they have big holes, they should cover it to catch the hairs, in the towel when they dry the hair in the morning, and then in the comb of the brush. So if that number exceeds 100, then there's a strong possibility that they have androgenetic alopecia, and they should seek the services of a physician who's interested in treating hair loss. And how is this hair loss, this type of hair loss, different in men compared to women? Well, the hair loss is essentially the same in men and women. The numbers of patients who ha experience androgenetic alopecia are different. So one out of every two men have male pattern baldness, mm -hmm. and one out of every four women experience female pattern hair loss. Uh, the genes that cause the hair loss are not determined by the person. Obviously, you can't change those genes. but. Um, you can look back in the family history and see if a mother or an aunt or a grandmother or a father, grandfather, or uncle have hair loss, and you have to uh, see where your family lies in that regard. Is it more diffuse in women? Hair loss tends to be more diffuse in women, that's right. So a common pattern of hair loss in women is a retained hairline, so about a quarter to a half an inch of the hair remains along the hairline, and then behind that it gets generally thin, so equally thin. Some women also have low density in their donor areas, which is something important for someone like myself as a hair restoration surgery to evaluate. In men, there can be many different patterns. So there's a scale called the Norwood scale, and it goes from one to seven. And uh, Norwood class one is just a little bit of a receded hairline in the front, and it goes all the way up to full baldness on the top of the head. Now, many people associate lasers with hair removal how does this promote hair regrowth? Well, this laser, the Capillus 272, absolutely is not a hair removal laser. <laughs> so hair removal lasers are ablative. They damage things. They damage the hair follicle. They damage hair. This is a biostimulating laser. It's totally different from hair removal laser, which actually, uh, the Capillus actually increases the capillary blood flow to the dermis of the skin which helps with the benefits of slowing down progression of androgenetic alopecia, as well as potentially regrowing hair. So using this cap, can you show us how it works? Yes, it's very easy to use. In fact, this is the battery pack, and this is charged overnight, and the charge lasts for one week. And then the device is turned on, and you can see the red laser light shining here. What happens is this device is actually placed on the patient's head, and he or she wears it for half an hour, every other day. 
So the device is utilized by the patient at home, which is a big benefit because we've had laser therapy in our practice for many, many years. And in the last four or five years, we've had the capillus available for our patients, and they can do it at home, which allows for this very good treatment to be done on a very easy basis without having to come to the doctor's office. Now, are there any contraindications or medical reasons not to be using this device, what do you tell, what do you advise your patients? What I tell my patients, there are just a couple of things to be concerned with. One is pregnancy. With pregnancy, there have been no studies with pregnant women, so we tell people if they become pregnant, they need to stop the therapy. The other is uh, epilepsy. So this is a strobe type of light. It's not a direct continuous light. And epileptics can be um, affected by strobe lighting. So we tell those patients not to use it. The other type of patient, it's, it's uh, questionable whether they have photosensitivity issues, like a patient who may have migraines after seeing bright lights. So we have patients who have migraine headache history to use it with caution. What about people who are taking medications that might make them their skin more photosensitive? Well, that's a good question, but the photosensitivity for medications is UV radiation, okay. and the capillus has nothing to do with UV. It's in the other end of the light spectrum, so that's not a problem. Okay, so this is not going to burn your skin or, or, or even feel hot to the it touch? Won't. Some people have a little warmth sensation, just from the light, actually, but it would be very rare to have any issue uh, with that at all. Tell us about what what types of patients you're treating with this device? Describe your patient population. Well, by far, the types of patients that I treat in my practice are men and women with androgenetic alopecia. So patients come into the office and they're noticing excessive shedding. Mm -hmm. We evaluate that patient to determine whether or not laser therapy would be helpful for him or her. And once they are determined to have androgenetic alopecia, we begin the therapy with laser therapy uh, at home. So the Capillus 272 is a device that patients use at home. So with this device, we actually have them wear it one half hour every other day. And what I explain to my patients about how this actually works, in my words, is that every single hair follicle, 100 to 150,000 on the scalp, actually has its own little artery and its own little vein. And they're all connected by this capillary bed, which is located in the dermis of the skin, where the follicles reside. And one of the causes of hair loss, of androgenetic alopecia, is decreased blood flow to this particular circulatory system. So what the laser does, it revamps or increases the circulatory system in that capillary bed, which therefore allows for the positive effects of slowing down progression of hair loss, as well as regrowing hair. I was just going to, to ask you, I mean, you, you talked about the fact that, that this has been around for a little bit. There are combs, there are helmets, there are panels. What's different about this? It's secure and it's private for patients. So the Capillus 272, unlike these other devices you mentioned, is secure in the patient's head and it's easy to use and it's not cumbersome at all. So this fits within a baseball cap. You can use the Capillus hat or your favorite team and the, the hat's worn very comfortably while patients are spending a half an hour doing whatever they normally would do in the privacy of their home or in their car where they're commuting or at work or wherever they are. So these other devices very often require to, to hold something up and it's awkward and this is not. Now the 272 stands for the number of light elements in the cap, right? That's correct. Why, why is this important? Well with laser therapy, the numbers of lasers in the device actually is the more important factor. How many and how close they're approximated. So there are other devices that have 9 or 11 or 12 or 15 or 50 or 80 and they cover less scalp, so fewer follicles are impacted by these direct laser lights. The beauty of the capillus is that it's the most concentrated type of laser device to treat hair loss in, in the world for that matter, and uh, patients have great results. We talked about um, that there are a couple of contraindications, but what about any, are there any safety concerns? Are, have there been any adverse reactions to this at all? Well, in my experience, there have been no adverse reactions, actually. The con safety concern would be staring into the laser. Just like you would not stare into a laser pointer, it's the same, the same advice, and it's common sense. Certainly, you don't want to look into this laser light. Do you have to wear any special glasses or anything like that? No, nothing is necessary, because one of the nice things about the capillus as well is that because it fits within the confines of the baseball cap, for example, when it's placed on the scalp, it's completely hidden, so there's no light coming around the periphery of the scalp. So there's really no reason that anyone would have that need for glasses or anything in that regard. And you mentioned that this is used every other day. 
uh, for 30 minutes. Yes. Why is compliance so essential? Well, compliance is very essential for anything you treat any medical problem with, whether it's a pill or a topical product or laser. Um, one of the things that I describe to my patients about laser therapy is just like you have a loading dose of a medication sometimes. So it takes compliance and regularity of use in order to get the benefits because anything with the hair cycle takes several months to really impact it in a fulsome way. So one of the common concerns about another product that's a topical, for example, is that it has to be applied to the scalp twice a day every day, and it takes about four months. And people want to have everything done yesterday. That's the right. I would say the American way, it's the human way. Yeah. We all want to have everything done yesterday. And so it takes time, and that's another reason that patients or people should see a hair loss expert, because we can describe the timetable of results. We can describe how it's used, et cetera. So um, yeah. I think it's critically important for that to be. Okay, let's, let's talk about the results and what is the, what is the timetable. How much regrowth can people really expect? I know there was a clinical trial that was done. Right. Well, in my experience as a hair restoration surgeon for many, many years, is that I tell patients the effects of any treatment, whether it's topical or oral, surgical, or low-level laser therapy, takes about four months, really, to see a clinical effect. It takes that amount of time for anything to impact the hair follicle to do anything in a positive way. So I tell my patients it takes about four months for the laser to slow down progression of hair loss, to see less hair in the drain, less in their comb or brush, less on their clothing, less in the shower, and about a year to year and a half to really see regrowth. So laser therapy, like these other non-surgical treatments, does better to stabilize progression of androgenic alopecia, and it takes, uh, it, it's a lesser effect to regrow hair. So laser therapy, like any other treatment, takes a, a long time to see the results, and it works better to stabilize progression versus regrow hair. And I think it's important to, to note that, as you mentioned, this is a treatment, it's not a cure, right? So yeah. what happens if somebody uses this as instructed for two years and decides, no, I don't wanna do this anymore? Well, I think it, uh, it's something that has to be discussed during the consultation, first of all. Any therapy typically needs long-term usage to be effective in the long term. I uh, have been using this therapy for many, many years, and my observation is with laser therapy, unlike with Propecia or Rogaine, for example, that it can be stopped at the end of one year protocol. And 90% of people retain the clinical benefits. 10% of people will revert back to shedding like they had prior to their usage of the treatment. The other two treatments for hair loss, Rogaine and Propecia, if they stop those, 100% of people will revert back to their pretreatment situation. So with laser therapy, you have a more long-lasting approach than any other treatment available in my hands. What kind of feedback are you getting from patients? Well, as I said, I've been using laser therapy for many, many years in my practice, and the feedback is extraordinarily positive. Uh, one of the biggest benefits, in addition to using it at home, is that it's easy to use. So there are other treatments to treat hair loss, which are more difficult and more burdensome. And the nice part about the Capillus 272 is that Patients can put it on while they're exercising or watching television or on the computer a half an hour every other day, and it's easy. I use it myself, and I find it to be very, very easy, in fact. As I said before, it takes a long time to see results, so I'll get a phone call after a week or after a month saying, well, it's not working, it's not working, and I have to remind them that it takes at least four months to see results in my experience. Um, the feedback otherwise is very positive because it's easy. It's easy to do. It doesn't interfere with their lives to get good therapy to stabilize progression of androgenetic alopecia. And people are happy because you can have control over many things, but it's very difficult to control hair loss. If you're fat, you can lose weight. If you're skinny, you can gain weight. But with hair loss, it's very difficult. And people have this black cloud over their heads saying, oh my gosh, what can I do? There's nothing I can do about hair loss. And we have an opportunity to help patients. And I have to say, I get some of the nicest letters from my patients, mostly women, I might add, mm -hmm. that they're very, very happy that they have the hair loss under control. And that's a big, big, big positive for a doctor who's making a recommendation. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.